Welcome to Values, Virtues, Ethics and Morality. This program is an invitation to join myself, Magla Pele and Sister Denise, who has been a Raj Yoga teacher with the Brahma Kumaris for several decades. The format of this show is the Socratic Dialogue. This means a philosophical method of systematic doubt and questioning of another to elicit a clear expression of a truth supposed to be knowable by all rational beings. We will be taking up a variety of subjects related to moral and ethical values. We will be questioning some of the world's conventional views on these matters. We will analyze and dialogue the topics in order to gain greater insight and perhaps even uncover new foundations as to how we formulate our value systems. Everyone is concerned about doing the right thing. Paradoxically, it has been found most people act against their own conscience. We will be investigating why this is so. Uh, Sister Denise, very, very warm welcome to today's show. Thank, Thank you for you. being here. Thank you. Um, today we're going to look at the subject of the role of God in the setting of values. Now, um, when... I look at my value system, I don't actually wonder what role God plays in it, but uh, maybe you have a different view? Everyone creates their own value system as they go through life, and most people are influenced by the values of their external moral authorities, which are their parents primarily, then the education system and the religious context in which they've grown up and then at a certain point in time a person likes to just see and check and evaluate do I really believe this do I subscribe to this the influence is very strong so generally they do but what I have found is that most Ethical systems, moral systems, are based in the materialist paradigm. And by analyzing it and checking it against conscience, I found that there are some problems with it. Now, one of the attributes of God is who God is called the one who knows, one who knows all things. And one of the things that God knows is the difference between matter and spirit. And when you consider people are spiritual beings operating through material bodies, then um, this is one of the things that God addresses is the fact that we need to identify with the self as a spiritual being and the fundamentals of spirituality, which are the foundation qualities of purity, peace, power, love, bliss, which I've mentioned a few times. So, what God says is two or three very, very important things that people need to know. One is that every human being is a soul and none of them are objects. Um, every human being is a human soul, so a human soul doesn't become any other kind of soul, an animal soul or plant soul or any other kind of soul. Um, also, what we have learned uh, from God is that everyone is depleted which is why the materialist paradigm has come in. 
because when you're spiritually depleted you identify with matter and you take your sustenance and your source from matter and this has depleted people even more so I suppose we can say the message of God is do not take sustenance from people, places and things take sustenance from the one who really can sustain you which is the being of God which is the source of the power that a human soul needs in order to operate in such a way that the actions you do are not against your best interests so this is really the role of God in setting values um, like you said um, people across the globe uh, set their own value systems but it's quite obvious that if one looks at what the world has become uh, people's value systems um, do not work for them anymore uh, but yet they found them they find themselves in a position of being um, unable to look outside um, the immediate environment for an answer as to what can work for them so uh, what would you say to somebody in that position I would say that if your existing system isn't working for you anymore that is a trigger for you to start looking around some people they say well my religion has not provided me with what I hoped for and they become disappointed then they will look around at other uh, religions or other um, philosophies, thought systems, moral philosophies or whatever and they will just try out different things until they find something that seems to be right a lot of people just go from one to the next to the next and never really find something so they become a bit lost some people they say well the only thing I can trust is myself so they go back to themselves but then if the self is corrupted and um, sort of distorted from the original condition which of course everybody is um, you can't find anything reliable so for me I think that you know the search for truth and the search for God and the search for the self converge absolutely and I think a person will just keep going until they find something that really suits and fits the criteria of I need to be right with myself mm. and I think also that the being of God is very active at this time and very responsive to the human quest for truth and for finding the right way to to navigate their lives so that um, that energy is is bringing the being of God and human beings more into alignment whereas previously they've been very much in a way at odds mm -hmm. Denise um, one finds that um, I want to give you an example and I would like you to tell me what you think in this scenario. A um, boy of eight years old sees a person from a particular race different from his own um, physically attacking his father and from then on he has learned to despise people of that race because of what he has seen. Another scenario is a 14 year old girl who sees her mother financially ruined by somebody of um, of a different culture uh, or maybe just a different gender from the one that she's in so then she has uh, a particular uh, fear or the need to protect herself from people who look like that or people that are like that so um, a lot of what people have become is in relation to a negative experience and so they set their value system in inverted commas accordingly they, they don't necessarily uh, go and attack people of that particular um, culture or race, they simply protect themselves from it. What would you say to somebody who finds themselves in that position? Well, I think it's quite unlikely that they would base a value system on one incident. Mm. I think it, it would have to be a whole series of incidents 
through which the person builds up a conviction inside that yes, I have example after example after example that this is the case and that would generate an attitude of that nature mm. and they would not change it until they see good reason to change it. Uh, yes, so uh, we all sit with uh, mindsets uh, based on negative experience that has um, become part of our own value system. You don't trust the people of this and this um, culture for this and this reason. Uh, I, I don't think it's quite as simple as that. Mm -hmm. I think that people build their value systems on the basis of their um, conversation with their own conscience. And when they see and experience um, traumatic uh, events, then that will put a bias. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that would be the foundation. Okay. Um, you mentioned um, the God being active at this stage. If somebody is quite devoted to uh, resetting their own um, um, value barometer, as it were, they want to reset that and they want to uh, become um, a better person because they want to um, become more honest, become more uh, good at communication, etc. Um, how would you actively include God in that? Did you say a devotional person? Uh, not, not necessarily. Okay. Yeah. Oh, well, I feel that First of all, you have to see what triggers a person's decision. I want to be a better person. It would have to be some sort of trigger. Mm -hmm. It might be that they did something quite bad that they had to face mm -hmm. that would make them realize that, hey, yeah, that wasn't good. You know, when people get away with things, they never have to face it. But as soon as they don't get away with it, that's really good because then you have to really look at it mm. and you have to really look at yourself and that could be a good um, cause of sitting with the self and saying okay now what do I really believe in mm -hmm. or it can be that um, everything that their life was based on all of a sudden collapses because that does happen to people it mm. happens to quite a lot of people so frequently that in fact it comes into the general examples that people pick up uh, because a person had a belief that if I do this, this, this and this everything will be fine, maybe they were told that mm. and then all of a sudden the whole thing collapses, they are at a loss they have to rebuild everything from zero and so they have to really sit down with themselves and think and they may go through a lot of emotions around such a situation. Uh, so it could be that a person who has figured out their values comes into the life of that person and then they bring that influence and that's a positive thing. On the other hand, you can come in contact with someone very cynical and decide to abandon the whole question of values altogether. So there are many different possibilities uh, that can happen in such moments. Okay, so now um, such a person can make a conscious decision to um, include God in the rebuilding of them of themselves. Okay? I don't know if it would happen like that because um, under what conditions does a person turn to God from not being involved with God? Okay. Usually it's when things go really wrong okay. and they turn to God as an absolutely last resort. Okay. My question is, how do you include God into your um, um, value building process at that There'll stage? There'll be lots of different ways that people do it. Mm -hmm. um, they may do it in an emotional way, they may come across someone from one or another of the religious traditions who may bring that particular angle on God into this person's life. Mm. Uh, you just never know. But suppose a person comes in contact with Brahma Kumaris with that 
background, mm. then we would encourage them to sit down and really think about what is their relationship with God, and do they believe in God, what do they think God is, what does God mean to them, and uh, we would expose them to the study of Raj Yoga, which talks about God, the soul, time, eternity, karma, so many of these things. And if a person responds to that study and gets something out of it, then they can go deeper and deeper. And then they could bring in God into their lives very well. But that you have to see on a case-by-case basis. Oh, okay. Um, there are people whom I know personally who do not have God in their lives at all and yet have a very high value system. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, yes, I met such people yes, yes. Whose, whose lives work for them. Um, I, um, I find them very interesting because they, they, they are able to manage life, their lives pretty well. Um, does God uh, have a role to play in their lives? And it's their choice, obviously, is it not? Obviously, yes. And what I would say is that the truly spiritual values and virtues originate in God. And um, if a person has very good values and they don't have God in their lives, but maybe in a much earlier period of time, they would have. Mm -hmm. And they would have, you know, sometimes people don't have God as an anthropomorphic presence. Sometimes people have God as a set of truths. You know, people believe in God that way also, you see, not as a personal God. But mm -hmm. um, there are some people who say good is the same as God, you know. Yeah. So there's a lot of different ideas out there and ways that people relate to criteria. Mm. And this is where I think also the conscience helps us because you do refer to your conscience and your conscience is part of your soul and your soul at some point had to have had an encounter with God which oh. uh, sets the direction of your of your life, of your soul, you mm. see, so that the connection with God may be very tenuous from a conscious point of view, but very strong in a more subconscious level from an ancient past. Mm -hmm. um, um, I've been in this position myself and I've seen others as well, where you do a something that looks right on the outside but with the wrong intention and where you do something that's you do something with the right intention sorry and on the outside it's wrong as it were um, we human beings I think are fond of getting themselves into such um, you know, um, drama as it were uh, what is the effect of that when is a value uh, real and what, what, what determines the reality of the value? In other words, that you get good return from it. What, what is the determining factor? For me, intention is very important. A lot of people are concerned with how things look. Does it look right? If it looks right, then it is right. If it looks wrong, then it is wrong. That's quite a superficial way of approaching it for me. I give a lot of importance to the intention. Mm -hmm. you know, a person uh, holds an intention internally and they will check that with their conscience mm -hmm. and then they will get a, a feeling of what action to take. And to the outside it may look really strange, but it would be a really very good action based in spiritual value. Okay, so intention is important. And your motivation, yeah. Uh, intention and motivation, the same thing? They're very, very close. They may not be identical, but they're very close. Okay, so one should look to one's intention and one's motivation mm -hmm. before performing. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yes, um, 
Sister Denise, is one's value system, is it uh, permanent or is it malleable? For, and by that I mean, um, if you're, um, does a person who's got a, a good, solid uh, value system, do they treat everybody the same or do they treat people differently? Well, does it, does it change from person to person? Um, well, you've got, you've got several questions. First question is that, uh, do the values change? And yes. yes, they do, because as you move through life, you change, mm. and your experience causes you to rethink your way of looking at life, I think, from time to time. And I think you do work with people differently. I don't think there's a one-size-fits-all, because each circumstance, at least what I learned in Raj Yoga practice, is that it's very wise to take each situation case by case, because situations are not the same. They may be similar, but they're never exactly the same. So we're always taught very much to look at what's known as the three aspects of time mm -hmm. of every situation. So you need to take a look at how the situation arose. What are the factors in the past that made this happen in the present? And then you also have to look at where it's going. And if you take an action, that means that you're bending the trend of that situation this way or that way, which also means that you can calculate the outcome. And so we are taught, you know, really look at what kind of outcome is the best that could be for this situation, and then what action would lead to that outcome. And in that way, you decide upon your actions. And I think if you do that for many situations, you'll begin to see patterns in your way of acting and also in the kind of circumstances that come to you, and you will begin to formulate your policy. Uh, you're obviously a very deep thinker. Does a rock, a solid uh, value system that works for you, belong to deep thinkers only or, or not? Uh, my point is, not everybody thinks about values uh, and everything else we discuss on this show to the depth that you do. Uh, does, is de taking things to the core, to the essence, uh, part and parcel of what you just saying? Well, it's part of me, definitely, as you observe, but I think that it's part of many people. You know, those people who think, those people who are introspective, those people who you know, really to seek to understand how the world is and how things work and why are they this way and not that way, you know, they will come upon something that is stable and mm. solid. And I think people do look for mm. a stable a reference point. Uh, sometimes people are not willing to make it themselves, but if they see someone else who's doing the work, they'll piggyback and that's valid mm. or they will take inspiration from someone they look for role models and uh, mentors so that's um, that's how really I could look at it mm. so Denise they are um, young people listening to you right now who are rethinking their lives who are having a good look at their value system and whose life is in the process of transition from the youthfulness to young adulthood and who are at odds um, on some level or the other but uh, feel deeply, deeply inspired having heard you. Uh, what would your message be to a young person who wants to make something of themselves but not at the expense of their conscience? Well, exactly that. I would say that um, give a lot of time to yourself, think, consult your conscience, mm. almost as if your conscience is one voice and then you is another voice, the mind, 
consulting the conscience. You know, the mind is the aspect of the self where you're moving from one side to another. It's quite unstable. But the conscience is much more stable, more calculated, more mathematical in a way. And the two sides of the self are very essential, but they need to be in conversation with each other because if you um, use one without reference to the other, your actions will be somehow incomplete or inappropriate or lacking feeling, you know. Mm. So these things must work together and they have to be balanced and uh, give time, introspect, uh, spend time with yourself and trust yourself. Trust yourself. Um, there will be people watching the show who were born into a religion, culture, race, part of the world that teaches them a set of values, but um, then they come to a point when they realize that it doesn't work for me anymore, I want to be someone else, but then together with that decision, there comes along with it a feeling of betraying who their family, their culture, their religion, and that betrayal can be a very heavy burden to carry. Uh, how would somebody deal with that? I would say, get a piece of paper, put a line down the middle, and put the pros and cons, and really try and calculate. Put all the things that your conscience says, all the things that the, um, the value system that you grew up say, and try to calculate the total mm. of each column. Mm and see which one adds up to the highest positive amount and go with that. Okay. Because even if you are betraying some people who with very good intentions taught you a certain way, but if you work out that there is a, a moral system, a, an ethical policy that corresponds to you better than the legacy that they gave you, then your first loyalty must be to yourself. Mm. Yes. And then you have to find a good way to communicate to them your independence and also your appreciation and recognition of their value, but you do not allow yourself to be taken hostage on the, um, in the thought that if I betray my loyalty to these people and sell out myself, that that's a good idea, that's not a good idea. Mm. There are far too p few people in the world who know that their first loyalty is to themselves, is there? Why is that? Partly the message is, you must be loyal to me because I am your mother, your father, your teacher, your guru, your mentor. You are, you know, someone who doesn't know. I am someone who does know. So you do get this, you mm. know. Mm. And, and it's something that eventually the person says, um, I'm grown up now. In a way, you can only really be free when you have when you have become an orphan. <laughs> okay, what does that what does that mean? Um, because this um, that, loyalty, that's a bomb, Sister Denise. <laughs> oh, okay, we have to take on the show for another half an hour. There you go. <laughs> what what does that mean? Um, when you're an orphan, you're it. Your parents, they have, in a way, they have power over you, and, and you owe them. Um, your teachers, your, all of these people who have raised you, you owe them. But when you're an orphan, you're really free in that you don't owe that, them anymore. Uh, but you, and you find yourself alone, so really you are free, but then you're also alone. 
So it's six of one and half a dozen of the other. And that also takes strength to be alone and to be an orphan because then other people start looking at you. You start sustaining them. But you have to try to be very careful in your relationship with people who are taking their moral cues from you that you encourage them in critical thinking. Critical thinking doesn't mean being critical about people. Critical thinking means that you really think deeply and you critique the ideas. And this is why we're doing a Socratic conversation, because that's what it's about. You critique the idea, and if the idea stands up, good. If it doesn't stand up, into the waste paper basket. Hmm. And that's very... Um, hard in a way, uh, but if you're prepared to do that because you have such love for yourself, such regard for yourself, uh, then you become a person with great integrity. Okay. Well, <laughs> that was quite a power-packed uh, half an hour. Thank you very much. Sister Denise has shared from her own experience, um, what the role of God is in setting our value system. Sister Denise has shared um, a quite a bombshell, well it was to me, I wonder if it is to you as well, that one can only be free when one has become an orphan. I need to think more about that and I invite you to do the same. So we're looking at um, setting of our value system, that intention matters as much as your um, external, as much as your action and words itself. And also, Sister Denise asked us to um, introspect and um, um, spend time enough with yourself, engage with your conscience, so that you can become the person that you would like to be. Sister Denise, thank you very much for your time and your wisdom, and we thank you at home for joining us today, and we hope to see you again soon. Thank you, and goodbye.